si lo abrí yo. How's it going, shipmate? I've got it at a slightly different angle today. How does that look? Let's see if I can uh, do that one there. Just trying to get it so my palette was on the video as well. Ahoy, biscuit! Biscuit, biscuit, biscuit! <laughs> As you can hear, Tank has been given a bribe treat to settle him down. That's where that slavering troll sound is coming from behind us. We'll see how that goes. Okay. What we're doing tonight is... Charlemagne. Emperor of the West. Code SHVA16 from Griffin Beast. Even Gary. Ahoy, my shipmate. And this is the miniature. It's another angel sculpt, I think. Real nice face on this one. Yeah. See, looks fun. The Emperor of the West. Let's get the. Uh... Yeah, right, let's start where we usually start. There's not much flesh, but we might as well get it in there with bubbly berry and flesh. Sounds like the chew treat. Has been here. Let's load up the middle of the palette with some matte medium. Yeah, basically the. the uh. Oh, boy, Rich. So we see where oh, sounds like tanks got into some sort of weird <laughs> zoobies after having a bit of a chew treat. We shall see if he settles down or not. Bed in his mouth. Egypt. Yeah. 
Yeah, Pirate Island getting more and more piratey each week. So welcome aboard everyone. Okay, so that's the... So it's very fancy robes. I'm going to follow the example on the website again. So we're going to start our red off with Abomination Gore. Although, for a change, we could start it off with Vampire Red. So slightly darker. We can have a look at that, shall we? So we always use Abomination and Gore. When I was playing around with this Vampire Red, it's very, very nice colour. So... <laughs> you knock yourself out, mate. You crack on. Yeah, so this sculpt basically comes in a few pieces. So you've got like the sword, which you have to angle for that bit, which is kind of tricky because I decided to put it in uh, after I'd glued the top half. It glues across there. You see, so you've got the cape, the head, and the arm in one piece. The body, obviously there. That's the join is, and then the hand is on the his staff kind of thing. Um. Goes together ever so well, but if you are going to do it, make sure you put the sword in first before you put the body on because it's much easier to locate. I had to uh, do it afterwards, and it's a little pain to get it in there afterwards. To chop it around a bit and put a bit of putty in there, but I think if you're Done it first. It's got the uh, little locating pin. But that was my mistake. So I'm just water in this back now. change to start with a different base red this isn't totally a lot a lot different from the pure red but if we put this on and put a, a red wash over we gonna be golden I think talking of golden there's like all these bits going across I believe it's like golden uh, Fred, etc., stitched into his finery. Sounds good. Anyway, I hope you all had a good week. If not, I hope the weekend picks up for you.
you can see over there that was quite thick the red and that's thinning out you can see it's sitting more into the recesses where I wanted it adding that medium brush at a time Oi! Let's use your eye one moment. He was getting rather excited throwing his bed around. So I've had to remove the bed from his playpen thing. Can have it back in a bit when he calms down. No pardon me. And the thin red paint just glide into those recesses. Oh no, it's for a squeaky toy. I thought I'd give it back to him the other day. I must remember on Fridays to take. Take away dog's squeaky toys before it start a video. Video. Will probably help concentration level ones quite a bit. As normal, I've done there uh, a nice cinephor highlight. Cine sorry, cinephor highlight. Cinephor undercoat. work for that. Again, this is another one of their kind of hero, legendy type characters.
Yeah, so today I got the uh, have my mate over and uh, quick bash at Blood Bowl. Which uh, was always good fun. Wood Elves versus the Snotlands. Yeah. Which, in fairness, the Snotlands were doing okay for a little while and then got the uh, crud beaten out of them. <laughs> Which is okay. So it was interesting to work out which bits are which when they fold the cloaks in and out like that. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? He tries to attack his bed, take his bed out, and he falls asleep on the carpet and starts snoring. Evening TMP. We're good. <laughs> Laying down base colour for our red. Listen to the dog snore. Some meaty snoring tonight. Very well, very well. Not as well as the dog who's now knocking out sets. quite some decibels. I was, I was going to say it's probably that soothing ASMR thing, but he's a little bit loud, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, trying to get over my uh, blood bowl defeat earlier, in fairness. Sound of those nasty, nasty, nasty wood elves. Beating up my poor little snotlings. In fairness to, to uh, my opponent today. I've never seen somebody roll so many ones in succession. <laughs> yeah. You mustn't laugh, but you do. to laugh especially if you're, you're playing the snotlings because you know you're gonna 
You're gonna get it. Okay, so just laying down this red on the the reins, etc. Thinking about doing the just in case Karen turns up later. I wish we should do the do the saddle in purple. I think that will look alright in purple. Ease a bit out. Add a bit of medium. I want to get the palette on there so people could see how much I put the medium into the even though on the wet palette. So anyone got on with their projects this week? What we've all been doing. Just filling up that, that purple. I'm trying to get all the base colours in. I just it, it doesn't actually come attached to the horse, so but I think if you can get everything, it's quite nice painting it all in one one piece. Grab some blick. Now again, that's all bought down black. Hello, mate. You're right. making sure we keep this black really thin I think it needs some what well, this is what I do with this pot of black is every so often I throw a load of uh, Vallejo black in there and then I throw a load of medium in there but I just like using out the pot it's easier If it starts thickening up, I just throw a bit more medium in there. There we go. I want it thin because we just want it to I want it to be thin enough so it doesn't quite cover. I'll swap that brush out because it's still got a nice point on it. Nice. Yeah, 
Even a Nick. Oh, blimey. The dog just woke up. So as you can see there, the black isn't quite covering, which is what I wanted. Now we've got the... the right. There, it's covering just a little bit well. It's not a problem. So it's just laying down nice thin coat of this black. It's very easy to cover with the black obviously but for this purpose I don't want it to cover. It's so one of the major reasons I was worried about the new army painter paints. I was worried that they'd cover too well, if you know what I mean. And I've not seen anybody do any videos where they'd thinned it out. But I've seen a few now, so I'm quite happy. So I'm this paint, once you've got it, like the army paint and stuff, when you've got it all shook up nice, it seems to really love this medium. So as you can see now that yes, that that Zen 4 undercoat is starting to really show through. You should see it better on this tail. I mean to be honest, when you're painting the horse and you're painting doing a black horse. I've seen lots of people like right? do various funny games and tomfoolery with black horses but at the end of the day if it's black horse you want it or a white horse you can't just paint them white or black there's no no police or nothing that come out and grab you and say you can't do it it's your miniature so you can do it it's like the other thing i found out the other day right is you can go in supermarkets right and you can buy a birthday cake and eat it, right? And no one even checks if it's your birthday or not. You can just buy one. It's crazy, isn't it? I think it's then I realised that it's um, something called adulting. But what I don't realise, right, is um, when no one's looking, because you're an adult, you can do what the crap you like. <laughs> Yeah, baby. So if you want to have Chris for bake, Chris for breakfast, you can, and no one tells you off. You can do that. I just want to let you know, just in case you guys didn't know, I hadn't really thought about it before.
that birthday king, that, the birthday cake thing, that's a fact. So as you see, we're just getting around that horse, just painting in black. Mick Jagger's favourite sort of horse, isn't it? It doesn't like colourful horses. Mick, if you're watching. <laughs> we have. I'm not gonna say it. I wanted to say it then, but I did I didn't. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, right, because we thinned that out, now it's drying. <laughs> <What's this? laughs> Making funny noises behind me. I don't know if you just put that one up. It sounded like some sort of weird dolphin seal hybrid. Okay. It is lining of his cloak as well. Good work, Nick. We're very, very pleased to see you, mate. But we want to keep that black nice and thin. So you want to get it to the consistency. Sorry. That falls going the wrong way. So let's just zap that bit of black out. Drop a little bit of red in there. So we're just going to take some of the paint off with a damp brush. There we go. A bit too much coverage going on there. Ooh, let's keep that black thin. There we see it on the horse now, look. So it's that sort of washed out black, look, almost like a grey. If you want it perfectly black, that's fine, you can do that. It's just I like thought I'd do something a bit different. Actually, let's, let's take that black off that bit. We'll make that bit white so it matches in with that bit in a minute. When you're doing this, you, you, it's tempting. You could paint this really, really quickly, and uh, say because it's a good-looking miniature, 
it's gonna look okay. There's another fold just there, look. But because he's kind of a special miniature, we're gonna have a bit of work on him. But when you get like there's lots of there's not much colour palette going on on this one, is there? You know what I mean? So you have to be inv inventive how you break it all up. And there's a really good paint example on the on the Beast website. I think it might be uh, I'm not sure who's painted that one. I'll have to go back and give it credit. I think it's probably Darren Linnington again. He's done a lot of work for Beasties. So, just using it as a colour guide, so you guys can see what we will see what's going on. What he's done is he's, it, on his picture, it looks like he's kept the horse fairly plain and the blacks it all fairly plain, and he's concentrated on. Uh, the detail side of it, which is a one way to go when you've got a miniature like this. We're going to kind of do a mixture of both of that. We're going to try and create some interest with the black. And we're also going to do the fiddly bits. Now his, per his um, scepter staff. I don't know. Rod. Whatever you call it. I want that to be black, so we're gonna not thin the black on there. I mean I'll look at the difference between that and the horse in a sec. I think when they sculpt the hand onto the weapons or whatever they're holding, the hands always look so much better because they can go so much finer with them when they've got to be able to hold a drilled out spear or something. They have to make them that much bigger. They always look a bit sort of Lego-y, don't they? Which isn't, isn't the fault of the sculptor, it's just a logistical thing, isn't it? Just get those stirrups, they can be red. Put the rest of the leather work on the on the horsey. Just drop that in there. Is that all the red I want to drop on for now? I think so. Yeah. Do you see how thick that that's the full painted red? And that's it watered down. So if you want to go for a quick colour paint job, you can always get, do that that red. Ah, good evening, Kay. As you see, for your arrival, we have painted the saddle purple. <laughs> I thought it would have been foolhardy for it to be any other colour. So we've been going we've been going 39 minutes that's flown by isn't it so yeah i think it's going all right so we'll just grab the crusader skin speed paint a little drop of that so there's not much flesh to do also got this partially knackered brush Just 
drop that on the uh, so these hands. face there. There was a bit around his neck, wasn't there? There we go. It's really well detailed this mini. There we go. So we've loaded him up with a bit of uh Speed Paint Crusader Flash for his and what we do that red's still drying so we're going to lay down oh there's a lot of gold on this guy he's dripping in gold first of all we're going to grab the bream out of beige so it's not many colours to do on him really. It's just getting it all laid down and then start fiddling. And I'll still stay with this slightly knackered brush for this bit. Just thinning out that that beige. Too worried. Let's get that brush. Just get into the sleeve bits there. I want to get into the sleeves without touching that bit of flesh because obviously that um, flesh bead paint would have just zipped straight up the. Uh, brush into the white. Taking a chance, sorry about looking at the camera there. Taking a chance, giving the dog his bed back. <laughs> Let's open the of energy drink okay <laughs> yes so I'm just going to leave that Beige in there is a nice undercoat. I think giving him the bed back was a bad mistake. Major puddle run this afternoon. So I had to have a shower when he got back, which zonked him out. So he's been asleep heavily since then. And uh, so he's now decided to wake up. <laughs> so yeah, so he's got the going on it's a gold it's a gold and oh, touch the 
need to put flesh down. Not too bad because I'm not come back around with the white on that one yet anyway. That's okay. It's a cracking miniature this one, isn't it? Okay, so let's think. Gold, let's put the red on first. I'm gonna put a red wash. Well, he pretty much was, wasn't he, really, Charlemagne? Sorry, he's an emperor, wasn't he? Now <laughs> swap to a crappy brush. Put the washes on. They do destroy the point of the brush quite quick. So rather than our usual base of abomination goal, we've done a vampire red one. So it's only it's not that different from the pure red, it's slightly darker. Decided to just go a few tones lighter than we usually do on the red. Just good to do different stuff every so often, isn't it? I think this bit with the thing you can we could have gone again with the uh, vampire red instead of the wash if you wanted to. Just to strengthen it up. Depends what sort of finish you want. There's lots of beautiful folds in this. His cloak. So if you you could put a lot of time into this miniature with uh, different blends and stuff. I hope some of you have a go at it and do. This is kind of we're going halfway house with it. This one. Or cloaks good to practice your blending on. So, yeah, that's the rings that side done. Again, because we've done that. Black horse. This bit of red going on now is not going to show up. So, as long as you don't go crazy. Oh, I've got a way to go yet, okay. Right, that's purple tone. Let's start. Working on that purple. That one usually could shake up. You don't often. I was going to say you don't often get juice purple, but in fairness, I have to use it every Friday at the moment. <laughs> Falls down. It's that bit at the front, really. There's a little bit 
There. There we go. Then next, when that's all dry in nicely, see how that black's drying out now. You start to see the uh, the grey showing through on the top there. On the tail, just what we wanted. Right, so while that's drying out some more, let's grab some gritty gold. And the guy's draped in the stuff. We'll be able to do it all on this first bit because, uh, nice. It's nice when you, uh, find a paint and you think oh, that's a really nice colour. We don't know who's that more. And then you put it back to where you think thinking then it sits there another year. <laughs> I sometimes just um have sessions where I try and grab paints that I don't use. That's quite fun. And use because we we all get our favourite go to colours, don't we? That's where that vampire red come from. I I very rarely use it because I go abomination core, and then go up from there. But I thought the other day when I, I thought oh, I don't often use this red. I think what it was it was one of the first ever. Um, army paint ones I tried and I thought it was rubbish because I hadn't worked out to use the uh, army painters stuff and it hadn't been shook up properly and all that sort of palaver so I thought well that's a rubbish rubbish red but it wasn't it was just that what I not used it properly There's a bit of uh, gold over, so I'm just tidying up, just with a wet brush. There we go. Be a bit more careful. One of the things you use the your knackered up brushes do metallics as well because they do kill them flakes in the metallic kill them Blech. which isn't too bad for my brushes because I'm only using cheap brushes so in fairness sometimes I don't worry about it but if you're using nice brushes Um, do yourself a favour. Don't dip them in metallics. So again, there's a lot of uh, detail on that gold. So I'm, I'm actually letting the the gold be quite thin on my brush. And I'm kind of jamming the brush into the details. It's just something else you don't want to do with a decent brush. Pretty much everything he's got is gold. He must have looked magnificent. You know what I mean? A big black horse. Gold coming out the wazoo.
Yeah. Just getting that gold lid down. Again, this is what I said, it's quite hard to, when you've got a mini like this, you have to try and uh, find different ways to break up the colours. Really glaring off that um, lamp, in it. You can see, okay. This is one of the uh, Vera sculpts, I think, this, I think this is eight, 850, this one. The thing is, though, you really do you really need one of them, so... Seems kind of expensive, but... When you buy like a, a general miniature and anything else, they're always dear in it, so you're only buying one. So, yeah. Charlemagne. Some details of gold going across his kind of robes. So, yeah, even more magnificent. So, what did you paint at Marine, Karen? I think I did some at Marine Eye. What was that on? Oh, I remember. <laughs> I'll grab it. It's over there on the side. I painted the eye, some eyes with at Marine. Did a few little uh, minis too. Sometimes, if you just painted a a big commission or something of all one sort of type of stuff, I like to just grab something random out and just kind of. 
let loose on it. I call it palate cleanser. You know what I mean? So that's gone completely out of focus. Let's pick that up, isn't it? I pick something up. How long that been out of focus? Wow, that's strange. I think it picked the but or it might have been the yeah, it's probably those as a face. It's sorry guys. I thought I'd switch the uh autofocus thing off. Do that for ages. And do let me know in the comments if uh, something like that happens again before I spot it. I'll look at the settings after the feed finishes. I was saying then. Oh, palette cleansers, wasn't it? I was gonna also show Karen what I'd used Aquamarine on. He's done it again. Where's it focused? I think it's focused on him. You'll find the face it's focused on. Seems to be focusing back here, doesn't it? Well, that's dang annoying. I reckon it's the yellow man back there. Go back in with red, different colored reds as well. Yeah, so that's why I'm getting this gold in now. That's all the gold. Let's grab the one of the where's he gone? The Mantic miniatures uh, fans amongst you will recognise this one straight away. Look at those eyes. <laughs> yes, the Goblin Moor Pup Launcher. The greatest missile weapon of all time. They do look like they're having a whale of a time, though, the pups. I think I read, <laughs> I had one when it first came out, Rich, and uh, I painted it and sold it. And then I, it went out of production for ages and I managed to pick one up. And I just loved, loved the miniature. So I had to get another one. What was the other ones I did? Uh, you'll enjoy these palette cleansers. And then I did a, a Dwarven Priest keg. Well, keg breaker or something. That's a Reaper metal one. So this is what I do in between, just to make sure that I get get it all out of my system. And then I found, yeah, looking's all. Then there's this an Amazon woman adventurer. It she, somebody give it to me. It should have had two 
shield maidens holding the shield up but mine's got a bodybuilder doing it which i think is quite funny I, I can't remember the name of the company it's a french company i believe yeah kings of war is great fun uh, uh that that is actually for vanguard rather than kings of war which I do enjoy, but very rarely get to play, in fairness. Okay, so we're going to go for Wasteland Soil. I'm just going to drop that on the planet. Because I like that as a thing for the sword hill. It's gone on quite thick. If you wash your brush out, a little bit of medium in your brush, and just thin it out whilst it's on there. Wash your brush out. If ever the paint goes on a bit thin, a bit thick, just yeah, just thin it out with your your medium. Just be careful. Put me a bit of medium in your brush. Add a bit to the paint. Wash the paint out of your brush and repeat until you get the uh, see it's thinner now, so it's going to dry nicer. That's cool. Let's find a nice brown for those footsies. Let's grab that leather brown, yeah, some leather brown. Yeah, the uh, Kings of War. Vanguard skirmish game is quite cool. Um, I love the way it, it feeds into the. You can do it like a pre game for your big battle. You can with any system, really, can't you? when it's uh, playing or anything I do like to have a, a story going on a narrative narrative play so again this is leather brown we're just putting a bit of medium in there there we go is we're going to get some light tone now yeah kings of war i've got the i bought the third edition set more for the miniatures because it's got a lot of halflings in it i've not played the third edition rules yet but i did play a lot of the second edition so this light tone is just going to go over the Beige that we've done. And I'm going to grab a bit of medium and just wash the high points off. I'm just making it run into the grooves. On this sleeve, where there's not so many grooves, we're going to water it down before we put it on. This light tone is um, sepia base one, a bit like something sepia, isn't it? The Kings Workshop one. But I just like the way you can play around with this with the medium. Seraphin sepia, I think the E. That one is.
Okay. This is our bit of gold in that somehow. Well, I'll just take it off. I'm gonna just put a bit of medium on all that so it just runs a little bit. Just with a medium in my brush. And I want that tone just to come away from the the high areas. It just sits back into the into the dips. There we go. Next, we are going to grab. Hopefully, there'll be enough flesh tone left. I've got to grab a new one. I'll tell you what you can use if you haven't got flesh tone. There's a mid brown which has got a ready brown in it. All these do take a bit of shaking. Very similar to the flesh tone. I'm just going to pick out all that gold of it. It probably looks a little, again, it's going to look a little bit shiny on camera at the moment. Always tone everywhere. We finish and uh, put the lacquer on it. We'll be all right. Like I say, we'll be golden. No, <laughs> be quite a pun there. Actually, I like quite like this mid brown as a replacement for the flesh. really stack this wash into the gold. Because we're going to go back and highlight it out anyway. Otherwise it looks a bit boring, doesn't it? I'm not, and the other thing is, I'm not sure about uh, non metallic metal, you know what I mean? It looks cool in a dis when you're displaying the miniature, but I'm not sure if it looks cool on a table, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Gold on the horses. Decoration, I think. That's all the gold we need. Starting to look magnificent now. Maybe a bit in there. There is. Yeah, make sure. 
just using a bit of a brown there to create a bit of shadow in, in there. There's not much paint around in there, so. Yeah, so you see how, how that black's dried there, look. It's perfect, that's just what we want. Perfect. Let's just run a bit of this around the top edge of that gold. Beautiful. Next we'll start work on, let's put a bit of matte white out first, just plain matte white. And this is watered down a bit. And it's heat running out, but we've got enough for now. That's the main thing. We'll swap to our better brush. I just want to lay down. I'm going to paint all his hair white so we can. So we can speed paint it grey. I've noticed um, one of the speed paints are really good. But we need to have it white underneath the highlighty bits. Just be a bit careful around the crown there because it's still got that brown wash on it. Any problem with uh, rushing these paint jobs out like this? Start blending in the so I'm thin it a little bit. I'm gonna start highlighting these like his undergarments, as it were. I know they're still a little bit wet with the uh, brown we use, but I want that to happen so it gives you like a almost like a wet blend. Ah, Jean Luc. Yes. And that white just hit the very highest stitches. Because we're not going to go back and touch that again. But we're using very thin. White paint just to let it run into those highlights. Don't want it to run into the the grooves. There we go. And the top arm there, so it's got the pure white and then let it run off so the shadow of his own arm causes shadows in the cloth. So from the top it's going to look white. As it goes underneath it's going to look its shadow a bit dirty. There we go. A bit more on the tip of his elbow. Just 
nip around the bottom here again. So I'm going to the right tips of those folds. They probably don't show up on camera because of the white glowing off the lamp. But I'm just staying right on the edge. So just very tip of those. There we go. Beautiful. He's got the tiniest, tiniest eyes. Let's get our tiniest, tiniest brush. It's psycho time. Pew, pew, pew. These are going to be a challenge even for me. I don't think you'll pick them up on camera. It's going to be tight. So we're going to put some medium on our brush. Get it on a good picture so you can see. There's too much paint on my brush. There we go. There's one, so load the brush up again. I think the most important is to get the paint so it's just going to... Go in there with the lights to touch. There we go. Put that back on for a minute while we let that dry. And whilst that's drying, I think the black's dry enough for us to do our silly silliness. There we go. Right. Okay. So we're going to get some dark sky blue. And we're going to get our dry brushing palette. Instead of putting this on the wet palette, because we don't want any more wet in it. We're going to get one of our crappy brushes. Load it up with blue paint. Am I going to go? Let's get our dry. This is the dry palette thing I made. We're just going to do a real gentle dry brush of dark blue. the black. It might look in some areas where it's a little bit too blue. Too blue. <laughs> Don't panic because you can bring it back if you need to by just doing Slightly black dry brush, or you can wait until see what you've got when you've uh, when you're lacquering it. So again, it's not like a high. It's wrong to call it a highlight, I suppose. But you know, sometimes black when the sun's right on it. Yeah, you know I mean, you get that almost blue sheen. It doesn't show very well on camera, in fairness. Well, it's starting to on this coconut. I'm just putting a little bit of paint now into it. Hitting my dry palette. Now you can see where those, the black didn't cover properly on those. And I was wanted it to be like that, so the blue would go into natural highlights. So free highlights, Sean Luke. Okay, so you see that 
brush is getting very dry. Using the dry brush. Just keep working around. So it will look a little bit bright at first when it's going on, but when you let it dry, it dulls off a bit. So. Makes a black, a black horse a little bit more interesting. Obviously, the cloak a little bit more interesting. You can, if you really want to get to shop, you can do that with grey as well. But it's quite. This is more subtle than the grey, I think. Yes, I saw Johnny. You've been very busy. Uh, Lucian sent the pictures. I think that's enough blue now. Which is why we have the thinned out black area. So now we can start working. Oh, let's get the black and do his dots in his eyes. Then we can put the little tiny brush away. For now. Same thing, nice and I'm not sure they're going to even sharp on camera. Ho ho. <laughs> be fine we put a little done very well Johnny the chat room Johnny's uh, son painted his first miniature the other day which is top top A bit of a congrats whenever you paint your first paint. Okay, so let's get some pure red now. And start building up some highlights. Oh yeah. Thinning out with our medium. And I'm just gonna just using the tip of the brush. Start lifting. Any of these creased areas. A bit more of a subtle step from where we usually are. We usually on that uh, abomination gore red. Yeah, as you can see. Red on the gold. Let's clear it up. Try to go across the, the reins and stuff without hitting all of it. So we're leaving some of that darker red in there. It's quite thin, so it's show for anyway, so it's not a big issue. I 
I just want to start this pure red in areas where there's a bit more light. So you saw there I've painted the top. I've painted a bit into the middle, but I'm leaving the bottom. So I'll show you again on there. So right, you've got that natural white around the top there, so I'm just going to follow that as my guide. That's the beauty of doing xenophore and doing thin, so I've painted over that white bit. Could leave it there, but we're just going to come in. That's where it's folding round its rump there. I'm going to work that right down to the bottom, then just work it a little bit either side, but don't do it completely. You see where it's wet still? Yeah. Cool. Just working back around his finery. Hope you're enjoying the snoring dog sound effects that we've laid on. Apparently it's the only reason that some people tune in. Pretty much catching the very wrinkled his robes this time which is cool but we're just catching the top top edge of them as you can see the colors start to lift to that next tone up you see the difference on there so you see that I've done the top couple but not the bottom couple Just keep working round. Can leave some of that original red just in the gullies. There we go. This is the bit where you can got any gold that needs tidying up you can do that as well oops sorry that was beer Focus. So on his cloak, I'm going for that top areas. As it's underneath that cloak, I don't want to lighten that up at all. So this one is that outside edge is going to be nice and red. Bit there. I don't want to play the whole bit. Again, remember this red I'm using is thinned out as well. So even though it looks like I've done a lot there, it'll tone down a bit. Was it? When it? Obviously, something's updated on my phone, so the phone camera's decided to. Use autofocus again, which I t took ages to find and switch off. The main reason I bought a really posh webcam to do this with, and then uh, hated the autofocus on it. Went back to my trusty phone, which 
we get all the settings right on. And then do an update and reset all the settings. Nice. Nice. Yes, I'm going to do some random live paint alongs as I get chance. I just so when I do these um kind of fancy miniatures and stuff. But I I'll try and put some warning up, but you probably won't get much warning. Uh if we're in the mood to do this they're gonna be random times as well but you can always catch them on the watch back thing like when you're working around with this when you're highlighting just if you see somewhere you think, ah that needs a highlight just pop it in there because when you come back you wouldn't find it again so if, if something and then you sort of I put a little bit more on one of the horse's straps. I thought, ah, that needs a little bit more. But you see the difference between the that strap there and the ones at the front now, right? So again, working on the front of that strap. Arrange. I'm just kind of edge highlighting, but letting the the back end of the strap just stay as it was. I'm just touching it. That's the other trick when you're highlighting is don't do the whole whole strap or whole edge. If you leave the little edges a little bit, leave a bit, go on to the next bit, leave a bit, you get it. The actual highlights work better. Does that make sense? I just thought it's some red on the black there. Rescue that out. Just using a clean wet brush. You can get most of it off. Better. If not, you have to go back and repaint a bit. So the more you can save now, left touching up at the end. Okay, so I've been around once with the red, so what we'll do again now is we'll go around again. So I'm going to thin the red paint out again, start on the leg we started on before, and I'm going to go to the, you'll see where, you can see where the high look bits are and you can see where the dark bits are still hanging. So now I want to highlight inside the highlight I did last time. These are going to be our higher highlights, if you like. So each time you do a highlight, you get higher. <laughs> and it gets tighter. I like That's why I think about it. This is like the peak of the hill. And then what we do is we grab the orangey red in a minute and then just do like tactical spot highlights. That sounded very good, didn't it? Tactical spot. I wonder if that's the actual term from I don't know. That's a bit round. I just spotted a bit of his cloak looked a bit flat there. I think I missed that. 
left there. The back of his arm. I think the focus is, I'll keep pulling it out, I'll focus myself there. Yes, so let's carry on with the red. So each time you put a little bit on, you're taking it closer to is it what word opacity I think? Basically it's its own solid colour. If you're going completely solid on the whole patch, you're just going to end up with just a red. That yeah, working with where what we want to do is leave bits of paint behind. What I like doing sometimes is taking it right out, so take it through reds all the way into oranges, maybe even a little bit of yellow, and then mix up a nice glaze and glaze it back down a little bit. That's quite fun. I think that red's quite red enough, to be honest. So what we do now is, let's do his beard and his hair. That's uh, Speed Paint 1, one I think it is. Runic Grey. I believe these colours are in be paint twos as well. If not, you could just water an ordinary paint down. That'll do. So, I always put a little bit of medium in my brush when I'm doing this bit, so I don't want it to be too strong. And then I can always add to it. Gray, stay on that white area. Be really careful with it. That's why we painted that bit white earlier, so we get that nice effect. Now I'm going to go back and load my brush up with it without any medium in it, and decide which bits I want to look darker. Okay, that's, I think that's glowing off the lamp now. So around the top of the crown there. A little bit more around the edge of his face, just so it kind of frames the flesh. Just play with it until you're happy. There we go. Maybe a little bit more just in the bottom bit so it's a little bit stronger. This runic grey's got a lot of blue in it, so but it dries nice. It works well for the hair. Okay, so now that's that. So now we're going to go grab our Mars red. <laughs> Are you the reincarnation of Charlemagne, Johnny? <laughs> Back 
That's one nice brush that's got a bit of a point on it. It's starting to look, uh, starting to get there. Where are we? One and three quarter hours. That's not bad, is it? So th this Mars red now, we're going to go back into our red area. And we'll go inside that last highlight. So now we're just, just almost dotting this orange right on the highest peaks of any of those folds. Again, on the any of the lever work. If you can catch that on camera, so I'm just basically using this as little dots right across the areas we've already highlighted, nowhere else. Across the top part of these rings, we leave a gap, leave a gap. Back edge of these ones, the back edge of where we're going to catch the sun. The dots in there, little dot there on this back strap, just that very high bit. And we don't go down very much at all. There we go. This is a bit like well, it's just like a space marine edge highlighting. We're not going up to the the step, the tonal steps, not as harsh as you would. Well, you could do if you want to do. Uh... Oh, we did last year. That's a long way. <laughs> that was a long drive. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm free uh, in March very much um, yeah I've got kind of an hour and a bit before I get to you which on a long journey makes a really long journey I'm not rolling anything out though. Never good to roll anything out. I'm thinking of seeing about uh, putting my head around the door of the big battles. I doubt I'll be able to stay there all day, you know what I mean? Um, I'm thinking of giving the boys a shout, see if I can nab a table for kind of display some stuff and offer some of it for sale because I've got to I've got to make some room so I'm going to be I think I'm going to be putting some um... are you are you booked in for the big battles thing Rich Just looking around now, see if there's any of these areas I want a little higher. One of you wise, and just let's thin this ready orange quite out so it's. Uh... Oh, well done. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll give them a shout and see if I can. Uh... Pop along 
see if I can pedal some wares. People, I suppose if people know that I've got some stuff there, they might be interested in it. Can't go wrong with undead. Well, I'm not sure if that's the correct thing to say. Yes, over to my right at the moment, I've got some, uh, these guys waiting to be lacquered. Look at that, it's rich. Yeah, so they're all the actual units are done. They've got the the light infantry and the Indians and the leader to do. So we're going for a bright gold. I'm just gonna highlight some of these out with a rubbishy brush. Then we could do the slain miniatures. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, I've had a few people on add on um, Twitter, I think was the one that they seemed to pick it up on. Sorry, not Twitter, X. Formerly Twitter. So again, I'm using this this bright gold just to I'm gently letting it pick out and highlighting. There we go. Of course, I will put a matte lacquer over this. So I'll, then I'll probably go back with a brush and just pick out some of the highlights. Yeah, they, they were quite popular on Twitter as well. So, it's good. It's good. I can't, the blue one I can't work out is blue sky. That's a bit a bit strange, that platform. It's a bit like Twitter was when Twitter was new, if you know what I mean. So I get it. So it's good if there's a group of you going on there, but if you're just aimlessly posting content of pictures and stuff on there, like um, I don't get much feedback on it. I can see if there was a group of you on there just sending stuff to each other. Yeah, there's only, uh, was it a million they, they posted they got the other day? So it's relatively sport, small for that sort of thing, isn't it? I guess. It keeps going that way, so... I 
let's get some brown and paint the base in and see what we've got. A bit carried away there. Yeah, this brush is knackered enough to do it. Yeah, I seem to be still getting a lot of uh, joy with. Um, Twitter, which is probably the frustration for a lot of people who are not seeing what they wanted to see and stuff. I get it. But... I saw there was a few people advertising on Twitter, like selling stuff. So I'm going to maybe offer a few things I've got to clear out on there and let people message me like on the first come first serve thing because otherwise I'm just going to bury myself in painted miniatures You'll turn on one week and there'll just be like a screen full of painted miniatures and you won't be able to see anything. He finally did it. <laughs> he finally painted himself into a corner. You can see that grey is really working on that hair now, look. He's not far off finished now, to be honest. I'm going to tone some of the horse back with some black tone, dark tone, sorry, which is the black ink one. I just noticed there's some folds on his cape and that that I just wanted a little bit darker. And that blue will still show for anyway, so it's bits like that. So let's run that in there. Because obviously it's going to run into the grooves anyway, so that blue will stay. finger while I'm doing it. Oh, um, that was Dark Sky. And I just dry brushed some of it so you can see just on the edge of the tail there. A little bit in there. So now I'm just letting this black tone just act like a filter. That's why um, I was being so picky at the start about having the black thin and letting the letting the undercoat show through. Just to make the horse look a bit more interesting really. Just farting about. It's not the sort of thing you could do for rank and file horses. Well, it didn't take that much longer. But we wanted to save it for some special miniatures. That's why I'm just doing this black now, because obviously I don't mind the cloaks looking washed out stuff on the rank and file. You see a big bit of blue there that I'll just put this black over that. You still see the blue through it. It just tones it down just a little bit. Again, if you're not sure, just um, dilute this wash down a bit and uh, before you do this bit. 
and then uh, you can always go back and put another one on. I'm fairly used to it, so I, I know what I want. So yeah, you can see that blue on there, look. We want that black to reclaim the, the groovy bits. What this, uh, what originally I did a, so I've got that pot, that Citadel pot there, and I put um, any black I can get hold of, really any matte black, and then just thin it out with the medium. So the Xenophil highlight shows through, and then I dry brushed it with that blue to get the, you can only describe them as highlights even though it's in black. But it's, I say, it's more of a blue sheen on the horse, isn't it? But you can see the difference in the staff, where the staff, I didn't thin the black paint at all, so it's just pure black. They still run a bit of tone over it, why not? There's a bit of that gold right underneath his armpit that I've missed. Oh, right up under there. I know it's there, you know it's there now, so what I'll do is just get the bright gold. And just dot a bit of gold in there. There you go. I've got a bit on his cloak there because I was being... There we go. Done. Right, so let's have a look what else can we do. Okay, so what we do, a little bit of flesh, that's the barbarian flesh. Let's pick out his nose, his cheekbones. A bit across his forehead. On his mouth there. Come back in at his hands. Again, we're just looking for the edges that are going to be up towards the light. Oh, dry pack. I'll, I'll just do this bit and I'll put it on camera for you, mate. It's the one that I made. Uh, the Army Painter wet palette has got a a lid inside it where you're supposed to store your brushes which I don't use so I basically turned it into a dry palette so got that over the back there so yeah that's basically it as you see it's just a like a little tray. If you get yourself a little tray and then bung any bits out of your bits box you don't mind losing. And this is just all different size grits and gravels. Uh, I glued some of these down with super glue so it could get a really good strong hold. Then I threw these gravel in and I tipped loads of uh, school glue in there basically. And when you're doing your dry brushing rather than use a sponge or sheet I use this so literally you get what load your brush up with your paint take a bit off and then you just paint away on this until it gets to can you see how it's getting to the dry dry spell so it's ready to go on the dry brush and there you go your dry brush you do a Julie, paint your thumb. There we go. So of course you know that the paint is going to be right because you try not on miniatures. Look, that's a Griffin Beast one. Huh. He's got no head. What else is on here? Oh, there's a Space Marine head there. 
Bitte. There's all sorts going on in there, John, that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be another five minute video, wouldn't it, Rich? <laughs> I'll put that on the list with the uh making the <laughs> making... I actually have to make some more medium up, so I was waiting until I absolutely have to make it and then I'll do the video so I can show you how to make it and how to use it. So, yeah, so let's have a look at this guy. So I think he's done. You could go in and paint some red little like gemstones and that on his helmet. Helmet, his crown, the emperor's crown. But I think really He's going to have to dry brush the, the base. Obviously, it's too wet at the moment. Uh, I can't really think of anything else that I wanted to do to this. I'm pretty happy with that. A two-hour paint job. <laughs> yeah, you will sit there and do the video, and I will video it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's done. Uh, I suppose I could orange highlight the red, but I think I'd like it that orangey red. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave that there that tone. The horse is going to look shiny because that black tone does dry shiny. But once we put the uh, lacquer on, you see how that blue is now working. Yeah, can you see it's got that natural sheen now? But again, when when we lacquer it down, that that'd be good, and then I shall photograph that. So I shall do that tomorrow. I shall. Um, I don't have to do any painting on him because I think he's as is. Um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll put tufts on him. Yeah, yeah, why not? That dark blue works, and also the deep blue works. So any any dark blue you've got to hand um, will work. Just make sure you go light with it, because you can always add more. And to be honest, if you do too much, you can just go with it black anyway. But it just makes it a little bit more interesting. I think. Right, I'm going to leave that one there, I think. Don't you? We've had two hours of fun and games, and I think we've got a nice sort of high end tabletop, I suppose. He's, he's tabletop plus, shall we call him? Um, yeah, Charlemagne. That was Charlemagne, which is a cracking miniature. Look at his face. It's awesome. Awesome bit of sculpting. So, yeah, happy with that. Right, I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to put him down. Um, I don't think there's anything else to show you. Yeah, cheers, Rich. I'm going to go now because I can then get on with some more Rich's miniatures. Um, thanks for joining us, guys. If you're new to the channel and you, you've enjoyed what you've seen, a bit of subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, sorry, not Twitter, X, Facebook and Blue Sky. Cheers, John Luca. Watch those that are interested on X. I will be having a clear out and offering some for sale. Um... Also, I'll be trying to do some conventions, I think, with a get me own table of those. Right. Anyway, guys, I'm waffling. I shall cut you guys loose. Thanks for joining me again. And I'll see you again soon. And 
Good night, everybody. Have a good weekend. Cheers, shipmates. <laughs>